Good day everyone. Today we are continuing on the module communication in social and health care. But today we'll be focusing on handover in health and social care. Handover can be defined as passing information from one person to another or from a team to another. Handover we normally do at the beginning of the shift when you want to have a quick break, when you are transferring patients from one ward to another or from one hospital to another. It's just to let them know about the patient, what you've done, any outstanding task and any plan that's in place for the patient. This is also including discharges, any home help that you want to provide when the patient is discharged. So quickly, we've got two types of uh, handover. We have the short and the quick one, and the long or the detailed one. The short one, we normally use when you want to go for a quick cup of tea or a break. It's just to cover you for like 30 minutes to one to two hours. It's just to let them know what you want them to do within that short period. But the long or detailed one is needed at the beginning of the shift or as I said before, when you want to transfer, it's very encompassing, give you everything about the care of the patient. In any handover, you have to explain what you've done for the patient, how the patient came into the ward, what, the, what test has been carried out, what has been decided. What is currently going on about the patient? If the patient is very poorly or is already getting better, you need to let them know. You also need to hand over future events like the plan in place for the patient. It is also very mandatory to hand over equipment and uh, materials that you use during your shift. Sometimes important things, in particular money or important things that patients have in the hospital equipment that is for the department sometimes you need to sign you sign it out and then the the person you hand over will also sign to to say i've received the equipment because if it's lost somebody needs to be responsible for it also you need to hand over login details and password this is very important if you are working with agencies agencies are staff that come around to cover up for the regular staff like if they are, they can't come they normally bring in agency staff they will need to log in into the computer so they need the uh, details they need the passwords to make their shift comfortable you also need to hand over a list of contacts in particular in case of emergency there are some people they need to contact they need to have the list like the uh, on call doctor the pharmacist they need to, you need to hand over the list. Also, all the files and documentation about your patient, you need to hand over. Hand over can be face to face, that's the commonest one. You talk to the person, and it can be over the phone also. Then um, I'll go to the third one. We also email, we call this secured email because it must, any email you are sending with patient details, you write it in a way that vital details are not exposed and it's only the person that you want to read that should be able to read it. That is why it's called secured email. And also we use letters. Letter used to be very common, but it's been replaced by phones now. Um, and even during COVID, the Zoom, um, Microsoft team became very, mandatory and that is what we were able to manage throughout that uh, period because many handover were given over zoom or microsoft team when you want to hand over there's a structure you must follow and this is referred to as s bar s bar simply means it's an acronym really and it means situation background assessment and recommendation situation is just when you are telling them about everything about the patient, what the patient can be, age, the gender, the past medical history, and that also includes the background of what is happening 
to the patient. Assessments are things you've done. You've tested the patient, you've done x-ray, you've done CT, and at the end of your assessment, you tell them what we are working with. Okay, this is the diagnosis, and this is what is in the plan. And then your recommendation is what you've done so far and what they need to continue with. Advantage and disadvantage of handover. Handover is very important because you allow for continuity of care. Because if you don't handover, they won't know what to do, how to continue from where you stop. Because it's 24 hours, you have to take care of people for 24 hours. There's no break in transmission. So you need to hand over to allow them to continue. And it's also prevent repetition because if a procedure has been done or a test has been carried out, if you don't hand over, they can also go ahead and repeat the same thing. So just to, it's also safe cost because you won't, you won't be repeating things that have already been done. The disadvantage is omissions can be forgotten because if hand over is not thorough, and there's, you miss an important or vital information, the next team may not know, and it can be dangerous for the patient. So you need to follow a structured uh, pattern. It can also be time consuming. That's why the NHL came up with a, that structure, SBAR, to guideline, it would, like a guideline for everybody to follow so that we don't talk uh, unnecessarily and you keep to the point with that as bar and uh, we quickly want to play this short video for everybody so that we can know the difference between correct and incorrect and over so let's play the video now yeah. Let's now compare that to this other handover. Good morning, Mrs. Smith. Hello. This is Charlotte and Kelly. Hello. This is the change of nursing shift, and we're just going to hand out some important information about your nursing management here. Would you mind if we check your ID again just to confirm your details, please? Okay, so this is Mrs. Jane Smith. Medical record number one, two, three, four, five, six. That were all the specific number of things. Oh, that's been really algae things. Are you allergic to them? Alright, so uh, Mrs. Smith is a 68 year old lady. She was admitted three days ago with exacerbation of the CRP. She had a four day history of increasing shortness of breath on exertion, not relieved by her numbers. She has no comorbidities and no infection control precautions. She stopped smoking after her first admission about two years ago. She lives at home alone with support from the daughter. She's got high eating bodies, all for their ladies and steroids. She's got two lead boxes and high eating muscle problems. She has all the cooling criteria for oxygen saturations. The target range is 88 to 92 percent because she retains 72. This is the result of all the signs of between the failures. And she needs QID ops and had some scoring she done yesterday, which is going to be done shortly today. She reports having a fall at home about a month ago, which is otherwise independent with her ADLs. Uh, fall twist was low, but I used the override option to so make her a high fall twist because of the recent falls in the street. Uh, she's been assessed by the physio, which is on a roll later plan for it to emulate. Uh, water load score is 10, and SD integrity is intact, and she's responded to a lot of treatment, which is on the wrong block. Can we just check your 
chest. So your station is about to start at 6 a.m. We have time, meditation, either testing to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. and present day to 8. That's right. Yeah. Okay. We need to check with the team today whether they should continue on the IV body so we can. Okay, so at this stage the team are aiming for discharge in a couple of days' time, then a discharge from the physio and also assessing the IV and bodies. Uh, Mrs. Victor, is that what we talked about? Do you have any questions at all? Sure. So at present you still need the oxygen. The home is going to be in two days' time and we'll ask the doctors to come and talk to you about it. So the things you need to follow up on are whether the team are going to assess the IV and bodies and uh, we can remove the camera and also uh, we can ask the doctors come and talk through our own uh, oxygen requirements for us. Any questions before we move on? Okay, happy to have you here. Yeah, great. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. So we're going to go and finish handover. Here's your bus. If you need anything, yeah. give us a call. Okay, thank you. Thank you, girl. Great, thank you. Thanks, see you. So, uh, the assignment for this course is I want in a next class, in a tabular form So, next class, in a tabular form, I want everybody to write um, the differences between and, uh, right and over and wrong and over or correct and incorrect in a tabular form and we'll discuss in details about that. Any questions? Um, do anybody have any questions? Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, in terms of the background, I just want to check how much of background information should be part of the handover? Because sometimes you get people that are already familiar with the patient uh, in the midst of that, there are people that are not too familiar with the patient. How do you gauge how much background information to give or not? That's a very good question. Um, normally, when you are coming, like for example, if you've just finished a shift, like you did the night shift, and you went back for another night shift. Because you handed over, there's a tendency for you to just say, I am back, what any changes? And that is just the handover. But if you are coming like you've been on annual leave and you came like two weeks after, you don't know anybody. With that one, you want to listen. But ideally, handover, you should at least mention the patient's name, their gender, what is happening to them, if you know the patient, it may be quicker. You may just say, okay, I already know this patient is diabetic. I just want to know. I know last time it was on two units of insulin. Any changes? But I believe until the person you hand over stop asking questions, then that is when you're finished. Because even if you give, uh, you add a detailed handover, the person has the right to still ask questions like, what is that? What is all, you, all questions must be answered. But as a basis, at least you should know patient age, name, past medical history, test that has been done, and the plan, and then what you've done and what is expected to what is expected during their own shift or any outstanding task that you is not completed. Um, any more questions? Please try and submit and get the um, assignment ready before the next class. Um, there's a bit of reference there. You can go through at your own spare time. And I think that is it for now. Um, please uh, make sure the attendance uh, register is going around. Just make sure you sign. And then I will see you. Thanks for listening. <laughs>